I think self-defense can look violent if you're looking at it as the person who responds in self-defense is as culpable, but we don't see it that way. We see ourselves as engaging in self-defense from groups who want to do our community harm. The mayor decried the violence, calling those responsible vigilantes. The police video showed one person dumping out a backpack with what appeared to be frozen water bottles, which were then thrown at officers. Demonstrators also hurled fireworks, one sergeant suffering a broken eye socket from the shrapnel. Police said the PVC pipe used to hold the Black Lives Matter banners had been sharpened and were taken out and used to jab at officers. Do you disavow the violence from Antifa? That's happening in Portland right now? There's that, that's, riots. That, that's a myth. Breaking news in the so-called Capitol Hill organized protest zone. There's been yet another shooting. Early this morning, protesters finished a march back to Cal Anderson Park when they say gunshots were fired nearby. There were different reasons for Antifa and for these neo-Nazis uh, to be there. One, racist, fascists. I yes. do not make any differentiation between neo-Nazis and Antifa. Just because they claim in their name that they are anti-fascist, their tactics are in fact totally fascist. One of the people groups who was put on created masks, to kill no. people they don't like. The other group, right. and, so and was Black Antifa. Lives Matter, Antifa. has hangers-on and aberrant actors within their ranks. But and the groups no. were not created to it's destroy parts of humanity. I do have all these done with people like that have Antifa is not a myth. The Democrats refusal to acknowledge the obvious violence spreading like a cancer from the Trump hating Soros funded brown shirts terrorizing America borders on treason. There was no anarchist violence in Lafayette Square. In fact, the only ones using force were federal law enforcement agents. I am standing out the front of the White House and you can see that the building behind me is still smoldering. The uh, fire brigade has just arrived to try to extinguish that. They've been kept busy with a number of spot fires in this area. There was an impromptu bonfire on the street here behind me. There were a number of cars set alight, even a hotel the front of our hotel was set alight and what was really terrifying scenes. This all happened in the minutes leading up to the 11 p.m. curfew. This is the first time that Washington DC has had a curfew in place and you could really feel the tension rising between the protesters and the police in the minutes leading up to it. Portland is another clear example where federal agents use excessive and indiscriminate force to break up people gathered to peacefully protest. If we had done nothing, what would have happened to the courthouse, Mr. Cuccinelli, in Portland? That courthouse wouldn't be there in any function. So I challenge anybody on the other side to say different. If we hadn't intervened, they'd burn the damn thing down. Hawaii Senator Hirono and her cult would sacrifice as many Americans as it takes to seize one party Marxist control over a republic. Antifa is an anarcho-communist movement whose goal is to use physical violence and intimidation to terrorize American citizens, to disengage them from the political process. While they do this under the cover of anti-fascism, the reality is that Antifa defines the entire American political system, regardless of party affiliation, as fascism. The most basic structure of Antifa is the affinity group, which is described by the pro-Antifa website CrimeThink as the essential building block of anarchist organization. It's a small cell of individuals who are known to one another who agree to come together to participate in direct actions. Those include sabotage, vandalism, and premeditated assault. I came there with my GoPro and my iPhone to record, and I was beaten by a mob, people who use uh, brass knuckles that were hidden under gloves, uh, punching me repeatedly in, in the, the front, the top, and the back of my head. They are winning. They're winning because universities are now effectively blocking conservative and opposing speakers. They're winning because the media and politicians downplay such violence. They're winning because local authorities are ordering police to stand down or prosecutors to drop charges. 
And they're winning because free speech is being treated as a destabilizing or threatening factor in our schools and society. After crime rates chronically skyrocket in the wake of the George Floyd debacle, the Black Lives Matter mob can do no wrong. Democrats want to ignore the violence of Antifa. They want to ignore the violence on the left and they just scream white supremacist, white supremacist, rather than condemn violence from wherever it is coming. The 277 injuries of federal law enforcement officers in Portland are coming from the left, and not a single Democrat on this committee acknowledges that. Soros-funded St. Louis Circuit Attorney Kim Gardner didn't charge any of the 36 rioters that St. Louis police officers arrested during recent violent protests, and as a result, they were all quickly released. While Seattle rioters are suing the city of Seattle over the expense of their protest gear, Portland prosecutors are reportedly not charging arrested anti connected agitators. Meanwhile, the protesters in Portland have moved from the federal courthouse to the local police precinct to burn that down. In yet another peaceful protest, the Democrats' campaign of political gaslighting and local prosecutors aiding and abetting of the anti-American subterfuge only means many more businesses will burn and many more innocents will die. It's been three weeks now since Jessica Doty Whitaker was killed, shot on the canal, and still no arrests. Friends and family today calling for someone with information, anyone, to come forward. She died the early morning after Independence Day. After reportedly getting into an argument with another group on the canal shortly after she was shot those they reportedly said to the group that all lives matter and that's what led to the gunfire that's according to people that were with Whitaker like their predecessors in the weather underground and Red Army faction Antifa will continue to escalate its behavior unless it is checked there will be more attacks and rioting techniques will continue to grow in capability and in sophistication their cadres will grow and there will be more autonomous zones for increased periods of time and more Americans of all political persuasions will be terrorized. The name of the current political game, especially in an election year, is to look the other way, no matter how many are blinded, injured, or murdered. So I hope this is the end of this hearing, Mr. Chairman, and that we don't have to listen to any more of your rhetorical speeches. Thank you very much. I'm leaving. I would also note that throughout her remark, she still did not say a negative word about Antifa, nor has any Democrat here. You're welcome to say something negative about Antifa right now. Okay. okay, she declined to speak, so that is the position of the Democratic Party. It doesn't matter how high and mighty these politicians think they are. Anyone can see that these aren't peaceful protests. They are sedition in sheep's clothing. 25-year-old Emmanuel Quinones was arrested in Lubbock, Texas, after he brandished an assault rifle at a protest and shouted, This is a revolution, and... President Trump must die, according to prosecutors. John Bound reporting.